Hello all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be walking through Havoc C2, a very popular C2 framework that has a GUI similar to Cobalt Strike. This video will be a little bit long, so be sure to check out the timestamp provided to skip to the part where you are interested in. The video will provide setup and installation guide for the Havoc C2 framework and following which basic usage will be demonstrated such as setting up a listener and generating a payload for it. As a bonus, the video will also be showcasing how you can bypass the latest Windows Defender successfully obtaining a callback to the Havoc C2 framework server by utilizing a C++ shellcode loader. Without further ado, Let's get started. As shown in the screen, this Windows machine that I am using is pretty fresh. I am downloading VMware Workstation and Kali ISO and starting it from scratch. A lot of the waiting time is edited out. I am trying to show only the important parts. If we were to read through the GitHub repo, there is an official documentation page provided, so that is pretty convenient. It is quite simple to follow through the installations provided to get the C2 up and running. Be sure to follow accordingly to what your environment is. As this is a fresh Kali installation, I am setting up SSH access as well. I prefer to use the root user directly. Don't worry, my Kali is behind NAT and not directly bridged to my Wi-Fi. And I don't have any port forwarding configured on my router as well. Let's follow the installation instructions provided and copy paste the commands over. Looking through the installation documentation, it seems that ultimately we will have a single Havoc binary and it can be executed as the server or the client, depending on the command line arguments supplied. This error is a weird one. I was trying to troubleshoot and followed quite a few references by searching up on the error message and nothing seems to fix it. In the end, I did a reboot of my Kali machine and instead of accessing the Kali via SSH, I accessed the Kali VM directly instead since the Havoc client is a GUI program. Let's run the server with the commands provided. To launch the Havoc client, we can simply execute the command Havoc Client. The credentials to connect should be in the profile file that we have executed with the server earlier. Let's try to connect to the Havoc C2 server by supplying the IP address, port, and credentials. This is weird, it didn't work. Ah, I see. It is case sensitive, of course. The username should be capital new and not the small letter new that I have entered. Great, this is pretty similar looking to Cobalt Strike. Let's start up a listener first. Once we have a listener running, we should be able to generate a payload for the listener. Let's leave everything as it is and generate it. After a long wait, we should see a download prompt. 
the payload has been generated successfully as an .exe file for us to download. Let's transfer the payload over to our Windows machine and give it a shot. Take note that there is a Windows Defender exclusion configured for this demo folder. We will be showing how to bypass Windows Defender later on outside of this folder of course. The payload works well and we have a callback on our Havoc C2 server as shown in the screen. Let's try out the file explorer. This is pretty nice. Let's interact with the demon agent. It supports a lot of commands. This looks good. Let's try out the shell command to execute IP config. Now let's try out the screenshot command. We can view the screenshot captured by navigating to view and selecting loot. Alright, now let's exit this demon agent and demonstrate how we can bypass Windows Defender, the good stuff. This is weird that it is still triggering a Windows Defender alert even though it is in the excluded folder. Oh well, let's ignore it. Let's head back to our Havoc C2 server and go to Attack and select Payload. Let's change the output format from EXE to Shellcode instead. Let's make use of a template C++ DLL file that was used in the previous video. Feel free to check out my other Windows Defender Bypasses videos. There is a playlist containing several videos on it on my YouTube channel. Okay, this is the code. Let's copy this. Let's hop over to our Kali machine and save the shellcode generated first. The daemon shellcode is now saved in the daemon.x64.bin file. Great. Now let's create a file loader.c++ on our Kali machine in the temp directory and paste the C++ code over. We will need to make some changes to the decrypt AES function as this function is heavily signatured by Windows Defender as malicious. This is pretty crazy. After making some minor changes, let's try to compile it as a DLL and transfer it over to our Windows machine. Note that the daemon shellcode has yet to be inputted into the C++ code. Alright, now let's transfer over the loader.dll file. This is crazy right? The C++ code contains no shellcode yet, but it is triggering Windows Defender as metabreter. Let's make more changes to the decrypt AES function. We should rename the function as well. Alright, now let's give it a try again. Awesome, it worked now. Our DLL template file can land on this successfully. There is no Windows Defender detection. Now it's time to input the daemon shellcode generated into the C++ code. This C++ DLL program will execute the daemon shellcode for us. We will need to perform AES encryption on the daemon shellcode bin file. Let's head over to this GitHub repository and use the aes.py script. The AES Python script will help perform AES encryption on the daemon shellcode bin file and output the AES encrypted shellcode for us as well as the AES key. Damn, the output is too long. It is tough to copy over the AES encrypted shellcode. Let's try to access our Kali VM directly instead of over SSH. Maybe it's easier to copy from there. Okay, no chance. It is still a pain to copy such a large amount of output. Alright, let's modify the AES Python script instead. 
instead of printing out to the console the AES encrypted shellcode and AES key, let's modify the Python script to read our loader.c++ template file and write the AES encrypted shellcode and key directly into a new C++ file instead. We can use the replace function to perform a match and replace so that the AES encrypted shellcode and AES key will be written into a new C++ file. Ok this looks good, let's write it into a new file called new.loader.c++. This should work, let's give it a try, let's compile it as a DLL now. It seems that there is a typo. It should be a small letter K instead. Let's fix that in our Python script. Now let's generate the new loader C++ code again. Awesome! The compilation works now. We have a new DLL payload file that should contain our AES encrypted daemon shell code. Let's transfer this over to our Windows machine and give it a shot. Awesome, there is no detection. Let's try executing the DLL payload file. Hopefully, we get a nice callback on our Havoc C2 server. Awesome, it worked. As shown in the screen, we were able to obtain a callback on our Havoc C2 server successfully bypassing Windows Defender. The session works as well as shown over here. This is great. We can even try out the screenshot function again. Nice, it worked. No detection from Windows Defender as well. Alright guys, this is it to this video. If you are interested in learning more about Red Team attack techniques and tactics, I highly recommend Rafael March Red Team Ops with Cobalt Strike playlist. This is completely free and available on YouTube. You are definitely going to upskill yourself a lot after watching this series. I have recently created a free phishing course available on Udemy. This phishing course is completely free and it is only about 30 minutes long. Several phishing techniques and popular tools such as GoFish is demonstrated in the course. The link to the free course will be available in the video's description. All of the references used in the video will be provided in the video's description, so be sure to check that out as well. I hope you all have found the video to be interesting and useful. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye!